Can you believe it? I'm uh, actually making a tutorial today. I truly believe that there are many, many benefits into stretching your own canvas. And uh, hopefully you will see why during this video. I also bought this tiny canvas just so we can make some comparisons between the canvas that we made and the ready-made one. So uh, I normally like to buy the thicker stretchers. They didn't have it, so I bought these ones, which are actually also used for the ready-made canvases. And what I don't like about them is, first of all, they're a little bit thin for my liking. And second of all, they have this kind of a very aggressive radius on the edge. And that is really meant to protect the canvas from tearing, like this one. So I'm going to reduce the radius a little bit. This is obviously optional, and I know that not everybody has a plane, but I do. So I'm going to do that really quick. So we are ready to put this together. You can put a little bit of glue if you want, but the canvas itself will do most of the work holding this frame together. With your canvases, you'll get these giblets here. Now you will have a little bit of uh, fuzzy bits and all sorts of sharp corners that will be a good idea to take them off. One of the biggest differences between stretching on canvas and a ready-made one is that first of all you can choose <laughs> you can choose your own uh, uh, linen, which I really like this uh, delicious, you know, very very dense dense uh, linen here, which gives a nice smooth texture. If you like the heavy texture of canvas, obviously you can buy, buy different linens, of course. Go. Go. This. You totally can use just a stapler gun, but for the bling factor, we're gonna use some tags. <laughs> so. I pull the middle. Okay. Put one nail, then I'm gonna flip it around, pull some strength. It's not a lot of strength, mind you, but uh, but it's some. I can, I can totally do it by hand. Sometimes it's even easier because then you can really feel how you stretch in two directions, like also to you and also to the side. So now we have both sides, uh, two sides stretched and then and as you can see we have this kind of wavy thing which is totally fine because now the real stretching is gonna commence. I'm gonna stretch it, think about like you stretch it halfway because you can really stretch it and move the whole canvas to one side. Give it a light stretch, tack it in the middle, somewhere in the middle. And now flip it around, do the whole row, and then finish back in the first side. We don't really need to use the nails because uh, it's not going to be seen, so I'm just going to simply use some staples. Uh, it's a good practice to staple diagonally, so the tension on the fabric goes 
kind of like in both directions, X and Y. Quick tip, don't, don't buy the cheapest stapler you can find. I just did the back of this canvas and basically this is a one canvas type deal and then it's dead. So invest in like the metal ones or something like that because it's just, it's just not worth it. We have a canvas almost ready. We just need to prime it because basically it's, it's just a net right now. So things can go through. So we want to make it a solid, nice surface. And for that, you can just, just straight up buy this uh, ready-made gesso, which is white and uh, kind of fills in the gaps and all that. But we are not going to do that. Instead, we are going to use some rabbit glue. So rabbit glue does need a little bit more preparation. And for that, I need a spoon. So I'm gonna put about 30 grams or so. And we're gonna add 400 milliliters of wo cold water. Now uh, we need to let it ferment for about six hours and then we'll move on to the next step. So it's the next day, it had plenty of time to get porridge like. Uh, now we need to cook it to get it all homogenous and we're good to go. To avoid burning the glue, we put the jar in a uh, what's called a bain marie. It's the same if you were to make a chocolate ganache or something like that. But anyway, you just put it in a pot of water and make sure that it doesn't go over 60 degrees, 65 degrees Celsius. I'm using a temperature gauge, but it's totally not necessary. As long as the glue doesn't have any bits and pieces inside and it looks nice and uniform, you are uh, good to go. The glue has dried for a few hours, a little bit longer, but you know, once it dries, you will know it. Because the glue contracts when it dries, it tensions the canvas even more. That's something that you cannot get. Where is it? That's something that you cannot get with the ready-made one because they are gessoed before, before uh, they are being stretched on the canvas. So they are very loosey, loosey-goosey. Now, obviously, it's a little bit transparent, so we need to give it a background. Uh, you can do white uh, or different color, doesn't really matter. Now, in order to be fair, I'm gonna also color uh, the, the ready-made canvas in the same color, so just we can compare the, the qualities better, you know, give it a fair chance. Look at this, look, I, I already want to paint on this. This is so beautiful. I don't know, maybe it's just me and uh, I'm crazy, but does, doesn't it already look so, so beautiful, this canvas? I mean, check this out. This is like the ready-made. See, see how it looks like. I don't know. I don't know. What What do you think? I think that looks so much inviting, and this one is like it doesn't have it. It doesn't have the. Let's put some color. See how how that feels. How that looks. All right. Let's make a few brush strokes. I'm gonna start with some green. By the way, I'm using acrylic. Uh, I just like acrylic because it dries pretty quickly. Now you probably can see that the brush strokes on the ready-made canvas are pretty decent actually, and they're very nice. However, the feedback from the canvas is not as positive as the one that we made. And on top of that, the texture of the canvas really shows through the brush strokes, which is more a matter of uh, taste, but I really like to have a canvas which is very smooth and nice. And most of the texture and the impasto really comes from the brush itself with relatively minimum amount of texture from the canvas. So uh, there's a good chance you might find all of this completely redundant and you much prefer to buy uh, ready-made canvases and that's totally fine. Uh, if you, you know, good art is good art and it doesn't really matter at the end. Uh, I just want to share something that 
to me is really really important and makes a whole lot of difference. Uh, I really like how the edges look like, uh, especially today that we tend to show paintings without frames anymore, which is uh, totally okay and totally fine and I like to do that myself. But that also means that our edges of the canvas are exposed, so I like to take more care on how they look like as well. So today if I want to make a painting that I really care about, uh, I really really tend to also stretch the canvas by myself because it makes, for me, the painting a lot more substantial. And uh, maybe you do too, I don't know, but I hope you enjoyed this, I hope you learned uh, something. And again, it's weird that I'm making a tutorial, but there, there you have it. In the next video, I will do uh, a, one of the two paintings that I'm making. Uh, this is actually the second canvas that I made in this video. I have some footage of me already starting to paint on the, on the other canvas, uh, so maybe I'll show it here, I don't know. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, I will see you in the next video.